In this video, I want to walk you through all the audio equipment that I use for my YouTube videos. The first is this pair of Sony MDR7506 headphones. This was one of the first things I acquired when I restarted making YouTube videos over two years ago. I use this for both monitoring audio and also for mastering the audio during post-production. I'm not a huge audiophile myself, but this pair of headphones is pretty affordable and provides a neutral quality sound for mastering audio. Along the same lines, using this pair of Sony headphones to edit my first two videos made me realize that relying on the on-camera microphone on my camera just wouldn't work for my YouTube videos. Enter the Rode Video Micro. This is a pretty compact microphone that I'm able to plug in directly into my camera through the 3.5mm headphone jack or directly into my Zoom H1 recorder. I don't use this microphone that often these days, but it did provide a noticeable improvement in my audio quality early on when I first switched to using this versus relying on the on-camera microphone. Next up is the Amazon Basics microphone stand. I use this to prop a microphone to be as close to me as possible whilst being slightly out of frame so that I can get the best possible audio quality from my microphone. This stand might look insignificant, but it probably helped me to improve my audio quality more than any microphone ever did. In earlier videos, I wasn't very much educated about microphone placement, so I always placed the microphone on top of the camera, and that meant that it would capture the echoes and unnecessary background noise from the room. So after I switched to using this microphone stand, my audio sounded crisp and great. The next item is the Rode VideoMic NTG. This is a workhorse of a microphone for me, as I use it for almost all of my videos, either as the main microphone or as the backup audio. To me, the audio from this microphone is slightly better than on the Rode Video Micro. That is mainly due to the fact that this video mic NTG has an internal gain control, meaning that I can lower the preamps on my camera, which will result in a slightly cleaner audio signal being recorded. Adding to that, this microphone can also operate as a USB microphone through the USB-C port on the right side here, and I have used it on several occasions where I needed better audio quality for my online meetings. And the primary microphone that I use these days is this Rode NTG5. This is an amazing shotgun microphone. And this Rode NTG5 was the primary microphone that I used to capture the interviews for my very first documentary about programming. I invested in this microphone not only for the audio quality that it brings to the table, but also as a stepping stone for me to further explore the world of audio production. Sure, I can get similar sounding audio with the VideoMic NTG or the Video Micro. But this microphone being XLR based means that I need to learn how to manage the audio being recorded through this microphone rather than just being a plug and play solution like those other microphones. And to drive the Rode NTG5, I have the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 Mark II. This is a 3 channel audio recorder that records really clear and clean audio signals. Frankly speaking, this recorder is a little bit overkill for the scale of production that I'm dealing with on this YouTube channel. But similar to the Rode NTG5 microphone, I decided to invest in this recorder so I can learn how to fine tune the audio and sound that I'm recording. I am also confident that I can grow into this audio recorder over the next couple of years, so maybe some of the more advanced features that I'm not using right now, I'll be able to take advantage of them as I learn more in the coming months or years ahead. In terms of other audio recorders, I have two portable recorders, the Tascam DR10L and the Tentacle Sync Track E. These recorders can be attached directly to a person's body as it's small enough so that I can hide them in their pocket or under clothing. I use these tiny recorders whenever I'm filming something where I need to move a lot throughout the video like a cooking video or whenever I need to record backup audio for a critical project like when I was filming interviews for my documentary. In terms of the lavalier microphones themselves, I have several capsules here. I have the default microphones that came with the Tascam and Tentacle Sync recorders but I also have this WLAF Pro from Didi that has a small capsule that makes hiding a microphone under clothing a breeze. Lastly, I have two accessories that aren't microphones, but they greatly help me during the post-production phase. The first is this slate that I use to sync the audio from the audio recorder to the video recorded on my camera. So before I start filming, I will clap the slate to get the audio waveform, and then when it comes time to join the audio and video clips together, I can easily do that in my video editing software as the clap has a distinct peak in the audio waveform. The second thing is sound dampening material. I have these Elgato sound panels around my desk setup here that helps reduce the reverberations whenever I'm filming my bedroom here. And whenever I record audio in an open space like my living room, I tend to put down a couple of these moving blankets to kind of absorb the reverb or echo from the room. But yeah, that is all the audio equipment that I use to record audio for the videos that I upload to this YouTube channel. This video is part of my YouTube workflow series where I talk about the processes and gear that I use to make these YouTube videos. Feel free to check out the full playlist on my YouTube channel here to see other videos in this series and let me know down in the comments section if you have any questions about the gear that I mentioned in this video or if you have any suggestions for any future video. 
But yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you very soon in the next video.